financial markets in turmoil. What are the root causes of the financial crisis? The dollar losing value. Heading for its biggest loss in nearly three decades. Will Social Security even be there? I don't know. Buy or rent? That's a very good question. Interest rates? I'm not so sure. Where do you put your money? I don't know. Welcome to the show that answers your questions. This is Follow the Money Weekly with your host, economist, and best selling author. Here's Jerry Robinson. All right, welcome to you, friends all around the world. Welcome to Follow the Money Radio. So grateful to have you here along for the ride. We have a great show lined up for you today. We're going to be focused upon cryptocurrency investing. In fact, this is episode number 397, and I wanted to provide a basic update for cryptocurrency investors. We began talking about cryptocurrencies, I guess it's been about a decade ago, right here on this broadcast. I was joined by a friend of mine named Trace Mayer. You may recall the times that I had Trace on the program many years ago. Gosh, again, about a decade ago. And I did not initially begin investing in Bitcoin the first time I heard about it. Uh, in fact, Trace came on the on the uh, program the very first time we talked off the air. And he was a very early adopter of Bitcoin. And I was somewhat hesitant about the whole thing. I wasn't really sure how it all worked. And so I did my due diligence. I dug down deep, spent some time, you know, reflecting upon it, thinking if it really deserved a place in my portfolio and ultimately decided that I would buy Bitcoin and basically made it a 5% component of my total overall investment portfolio. And that's the way it's been ever since. So we carve out 5% out of all the investment dollars that we could spend, you know, we could put money, what, into real estate, we could put money into the stock market, we could buy uh, hard assets, you know, gold, silver, diamonds, we could buy, you know, we could put money into our own business or whatever, right? We could do different things. And what we settled on back then was a 5% allocation of our investment dollars to Bitcoin and other quality projects as we found them. So we began with Bitcoin. And then we uh, also discovered another very interesting cryptocurrency way back in the day. I mean, we're talking, you know, again, about a decade ago, uh, we discovered Ripple, uh, XRP. And at the time, XRP was trading at around two tenths of a penny or something like that. It was extreme. It was less than a penny. And I had done some research on it, thought it was a pretty compelling investment. So I went ahead and, you know, began to add it as well. We also then uh, later added Ethereum when it came out. Ethereum is really only about six years old. We began to add Ethereum to our portfolio and then many others. Today, we hold around 17, 18 different cryptocurrencies in our portfolio. And we don't allocate the same number of dollars to each project. So we really like, you know, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, and we also were very early adopters of Cardano. Many of our members, in fact, were able to get into Cardano very early because we were alerting them to uh, the research we were doing on the project. And so many of our members were able to get into Cardano when it was, you know, three cents. Uh, today, of course, Cardano, the actual native token, uh, ADA, named after Ada Loveless, a uh, well-known uh, scientist of the past, you know, now trades you know, close to $3 as of a few weeks ago. I think it's come down a little bit since that time, since they uh, released their Alonzo update. But regardless, uh, the cryptocurrency space has really been uh, a compelling place to be. And it, it really is um, oftentimes, you know, viewed, I think, wrongly, uh, perhaps because people don't think in terms of just diversification. So from my perspective, again, when I invest in cryptocurrencies, I'm not going all in, right? It's a small component of my overall inv investment portfolio. And that's what we teach here. In fact, let me just, before we talk about a, so a few updates here, I want to talk about, you know, uh, you know, Bitcoin. I want to talk about Ethereum. I want to talk about Cardano. I want to talk about some of the adoption we're seeing globally on this podcast, on this episode. But let me just give you our cryptocurrency investing approach. So I've already told you that the, um, you know, I'll tell you kind of our, there's about four points here, I'll tell you. So number one, we limit our cryptocurrency investing to 5% of all investable assets. So again, out of, 
you know, out of every dollar that we have to invest, a nickel will go into cryptocurrencies, usually, you know, high quality, oh, almost all the time, high quality projects, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and others, there's many others we like. Uh, but, you know, all of that is available to our members, we have a portfolio with buy and sell alerts and all of that. That's what our members have access to gold and platinum members. So again, that's the first thing we limit cryptocurrency investing to 5% of investable assets. Secondly, we dollar cost average into our favorite projects when they, uh, you know, normally, that's what our normal default behavior is. So what we just do is we just dollar cost average. And you can do that weekly, you can do that bi weekly, you can do it monthly. You know, we've kind of tested different areas. We've, we've been doing it bi weekly for a long time, but we've been back testing a weekly strategy and have actually starting to move towards a weekly strategy. So instead of uh, buying every two weeks, we're starting to do it every week instead. So we take that nickel out of every dollar that we have to invest, you know, every week. And we are putting it into our favorite cryptocurrencies. And we just dollar cost average. That's how we accumulate. Now, there's a, a trick to that, though, because we use something called the extreme value zone. Our members are very familiar with this, but it's an extreme value zone. We measure that by taking a look at the last high, the, the last or the previous high, uh, in some cases, especially in this latest bull run, that would be an all time high. And we measure down 60 to 80%. And that 60 to 80% window that you know, decrease from the all time high, we consider that something we call the extreme value zone That's what we call it. It's basically a 60 to 80% discount from the previous all time high that zone. And when one of our favorite projects falls into that zone, like we had one the other day that did and I alerted our members, I said, Okay, one of our favorite projects has just fallen into the extreme value zone. And what we do there is we will double or triple our dollar cost averaging, you know, into that particular project, while it is in the, the extreme value zone, because you know, when something is trading 60 to 80% from an all time high, and it's a high quality asset, you know, that's a pretty, that's a pretty good deal. And so as a do, you know, someone who's dollar cost averaging into these projects, I look for those kinds of discounts, because you can buy more when you're dollar cost averaging when it's cheaper. Uh, I do the same thing with stocks, by the way, some of the long term stocks we like for the long term, you know, stocks that are really high quality, when they fall 60 to 80% from their previous highs, sometimes that might be an all time high might just be the last high, then, you know, we're, we're looking for an opportunity. And then we'll, you know, dollar cost average more we will double or triple what we're doing. So anyway, so we use that extreme value zone in in cryptocurrencies as well as stocks. And, uh, and then finally, the, the final or fourth point I'll mention is that we always try to keep our cryptocurrencies on a hardware wallet, we like the ledger nano wallet. We also have used the Trezor. We use the Trezor sometimes as well. Uh, so the benefit of using a hardware wallet is that you keep your private keys off of offline. They're not on the internet, and you hold them. So it's similar to, you know, if you're not familiar with the cryptocurrency space, if you're new to the space, uh, you may be familiar with the old adage about owning gold. If you don't hold it, you don't own it, right? So you really want to try to hold your physical gold whenever you invest into it. Because again, you know, owning it is holding it, so to speak. Now you can't always do that. If you're investing in gold in, in an IRA or something like that, you know, you can't actually hold possession of it. And that's okay. And that's what I mean on cryptocurrency. Sometimes you just can't uh, hold it, maybe your wallet doesn't have isn't able to hold that particular uh, cryptocurrency or whatever. But as a rule, as a default, we try to hold our cryptocurrencies on a hardware wallet, very, very important. And that keeps that keeps it very protected from hackers. Now there's still kind of all kinds of phishing scams and all kinds of stuff that are, are still trying to target your hardware wallet. But by keeping it there, and keeping that in a safe place, and following the you know, basic uh, guidelines, you know, you're much, much, much safer than keeping, you know, your cryptocurrency on an online wallet, or where it, the private keys are not held by you. Okay, so all that said, uh, so that's our cryptocurrency investing approach, 5% of assets, dollar cost average on a regular basis, use that extreme value zone to double up or triple your dollar cost averaging when you have that opportunity, and then keep those private keys to yourself, you know, keep them in a hardware wallet. Now, uh, we get questions sometimes here, again, from people who say, you know, but maybe I'm too late for cryptocurrency, Jerry, you got in a decade ago, I mean, you got in whenever Bitcoin was, you know, cheap, you got in whenever Ethereum was nothing, you got in when Cardano was nothing, you know, me, I'm just getting started. 
and you know maybe it's too late for me. And what I tell people when it comes to that is that no, I don't think so. I think we're very early still. And I'll give you a couple of reasons why. You know, first of all, there's no Bitcoin ETF here in the United States. There's just none. Now I know there's one there's a few in Canada. I know there's a few other places, but the United States is the biggest financial market on the in the world. And there's still no crypto or uh, there's still no Bitcoin ETF. I mean, it's almost hard to believe, you know, that Bitcoin has accelerated to the place that it has and the Wall Street has not been able to keep up. So Wall Street will eventually have a Bitcoin ETF that's traded. And that means that people who have 401ks or IRAs or they just want to trade Bitcoin will then be able to do that through an ETF. And there's clearly a lot of people who are more familiar with ETFs than they are with cryptocurrencies. And so the demand for, for Bitcoin will then accelerate when there is an ETF. So it's still early. It's the same thing we say about the cannabis market. You know, we like to accumulate high quality cannabis stocks right now because it, it's still illegal, but it's clearly going to be legal. I mean, the, the wall, you know, at some point, the federal government's going to have to do something right? because all the states have already made up their minds. You know, the majority of states have already legalized uh, in some way, shape or form, or they have decriminalized. You know, so it's the same thing with cryptos. We think that it's not a foregone conclusion that the United States government won't turn completely against cryptocurrencies, but the way we manage that risk is by keeping our investment exposure low, right? So again, by only putting a nickel out of every dollar into cryptos, you know, if cryptos go away, you know, I'm not going to be living under a bridge, right? I won't be, you know, living in a gutter or living in a cardboard box if they go away, right? So I'm, I'm taking on a measured amount of risk in order to get exposure to this emerging asset class. Uh, and we really do believe that cryptocurrencies are an asset class that, probably deserve a place in your portfolio at some you know at some place we think five percent is a great number but you know that number is of course up to you to decide uh, many corporations are adopting that five percent number we adopted that very early and we're surprised to see places like kathy wood and arc arc invest and then of course uh, michael sailor's uh, micro strategy and other corporations that are you know beginning to adopt bitcoin as an asset on their balance sheets now, uh, also another reason why it's still early. I saw this report the other day. This doesn't, you know, this may not be a, a huge reason, but I think it's compelling. There was a poll in Australia where 56% of the people who were polled in this survey uh, said that they thought that Elon Musk invented Bitcoin. I, when I heard that, I thought, "Wow, no kidding!" Which shows you again, you know, and for those of you who are new or you don't know about Bitcoin or you're not familiar with, you know, how it works. Uh, Elon Musk did not invent Bitcoin. I mean, at least to our knowledge, we don't really know who invented Bitcoin, to be honest. Some guy named Satoshi Nakamoto, who still remains faceless. So again, it, I guess it could be Elon Musk. But the point is, is that in this poll, the people thought that, you know, Elon Musk was the inventor of Bitcoin because they just didn't know a lot about it. So this tells us that even though Bitcoin has built this massive brand around the world, it's a global brand, you know, like Jeep or Coca-Cola, or, you know, some of these other really big brand names that you can think of. Bitcoin has built this huge brand, but still many people don't own it. And many people don't understand how it works. There's no ETF for it, but that's coming. And so, no, I don't think that it's too late. But again, I think you should tread carefully in the space. Do your due diligence. Do your research like I did. You know, drill down deep. Then, you know, take the plunge if you feel like it's the right thing. But also, you know, as we said, make sure that you you know, limit how much you put into it. Don't go crazy. Don't go all in, right? That's how people lose their shirt. That's the way you should approach every asset class. Don't go all in into anything, right? You want to have a diversified investment portfolio. Can't speak strongly to that enough. So we'll be right back in just a few minutes. We're going to come back and uh, go a little deeper on what's been happening globally. I want to provide an update on some of the different countries and what they're doing and uh, we'll have a bit more to talk about, especially on these, uh, a few of the other currencies as well, like Cardano and also uh, Ethereum. We'll be right back. And follow the money returns after this. 
Hey friends, Jerry Robinson here from Follow the Money Radio. Are you a new cryptocurrency investor or considering becoming a cryptocurrency investor? One of the very best cryptocurrencies in my mind for the long term is, of course, Bitcoin. And we have been investing in Bitcoin personally here at Follow the Money since 2013. It has been quite a ride and we have learned so much over the years owning this asset. And we have just released a brand new video called Bitcoin 101. For those of you who are looking to understand what Bitcoin is, how it works, why it is so attractive to investors, and what the future could hold for this unique asset, this is a must-have video. It's on special right now for a very discounted price, only $7, to give you access to a full hour of education from me, someone who has actually been invested in Bitcoin for more than eight years. So you're going to learn a tremendous amount in this one hour video. I encourage you to check it out. It's now available in our online store. Simply go to followthemoney.com forward slash shop. And there you will find this brand new Bitcoin 101 video, an hour long jam packed with education that you need. Not only do we talk about what Bitcoin is, and why it's so attractive to investors. We also talk about our own approach to cryptocurrency investing and how we approach Bitcoin in particular. So you'll really learn a lot. If you know someone who wants to learn more about Bitcoin, if that's you or someone else you know, check out followthemoney.com forward slash shop and get instant access to our brand new Bitcoin 101 video. I know it'll be a great eye opener for you if you're looking to invest in cryptocurrencies. So go to followthemoney.com forward slash shop and get your Bitcoin 101 video today. All right, welcome back to the program, friends. You're listening to Follow the Money Radio. You can find us online at followthemoney.com. We have lots of information there, but especially for our premium members. We have our entire cryptocurrency portfolio there, lots and lots of vast uh, educational videos. Our, we buy and sell alerts anytime we buy or sell a cryptocurrency. We tell you, we tell you what our favorite cryptocurrencies are. We've been in the space for a long time, but it's not just cryptocurrencies there. You'll also learn about stocks. We have a trend trading software. We have ongoing coaching for those who, you know, want to really get better at trading and investing and learning about the economy. So anyway, followthemoney.com. Click on the plans and pricing button if you want to learn about becoming a member. We'd love to have you. We've had so many new members over the last uh, few months as people are trying to, you know, really invest in their financial education. So we'd love to have you. We'd love to uh, be there for you and help you along the way. All right, so uh, let's continue on now on cryptocurrency. We're, we're doing cryptocurrency investing update this uh, episode. And uh, back on episode 391, I think it was back in the middle of June, we did a podcast entitled Bitcoin is, is Legal Tender. And I alerted you to a new law that had passed in El Salvador that would officially make Bitcoin legal tender in that country. Well, just last week on September 7th, that law came into full force making El Salvador the first country in the world to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender. That means that all the local merchants in that country are required to accept Bitcoin as a means of payment. So not only did El Salvador embrace Bitcoin as legal tender, so too the country is actively buying and holding Bitcoin on its government balance sheet. And the government of El Salvador has also done one more. It's gone, gone a bit further, and it has reportedly exempted investors from paying a capital gains tax and an income tax on Bitcoin. So they've really clarified the tax laws and tax rules around Bitcoin and have made it very favorable for investors. So the country is looking clearly to encourage foreign investment through these big tax breaks on Bitcoin. They're looking to attract, you know, entrepreneurs, investors and things of this nature. I think it's a very smart move on the part of El Salvador. And the critics, of course, have pointed to Bitcoin's volatility and have said that this whole thing is a bad idea. But I'm personally a proponent of competing currencies. I think that, you know, anytime you have competition, it's a good thing. Uh, typically, right, in most things, competition is typically a, a good idea when it comes to well, think about it. I mean, when you walk into the store, you have lots of different choices, don't you? You don't, you don't just have one jar of pickles, right? You don't just have one you know, type of ketchup, right? You want 
several things, right? Well, it's the same thing when it comes to currencies. Competing currencies, I think, is a good idea. And of course, the Treasury doesn't think that's a good idea. The Federal Reserve doesn't think it's a good idea, right? They don't want competition. They claim to be free market, but they don't want any competition when it comes to the currency. Well, anyway, um, I think it's a, I think it's a dangerous idea not to have competing currencies, and we can tell that by this world that has become so dominated by a singular fiat currency like the U.S. dollar. Um, so you would think that those who are for consumer choice would understand that El Salvador simply wants another choice when it comes to its currencies. Right now. El Salvador uses the U.S. dollar. They adopted the dollar back in 2001 as a currency. Uh, by the way, there was an interesting poll that was put out by YouGov that found that 27% of Americans supported this idea of making Bitcoin legal tender in the United States. So, you know, while El Salvador did it here in the United States, there's a little bit of a growing movement of people who say, that's a good idea. We'd like to see it here. I really doubt that's going to happen. You know, I really doubt that they would ever allow that to happen. The dollar has kind of a death grip on uh, the United States. And, you know, the idea of any kind of competing currency, that's just a anathema to uh, Washington. But uh, I'll read you a little bit of this article here from Cointelegraph about this YouGov poll. It says, according to the poll from research and data analytics firm YouGov, 11% of respondents strongly support the idea that Bitcoin should be used as legal tender in the U.S. And a further 16% of respondents would somewhat support it. The poll, which surveyed 4,912 U.S. residents, so it's a small sampling, but still, you know, provides a, a basic overview, uh, an idea, indicated that a large, larger number of Democratic respondents support the proposition than Republicans. Around 29% of Democrats stated they either strongly or somewhat support recognizing Bitcoin as legal tender, compared with 26% of Republicans. The findings show that income has a significant effect on an individual's attitudes regarding crypto, with respondents who earn more than $80,000 annually being twice as likely to support Bitcoin as legal tender, or 21%, than those who earn less than $40,000, just 11%. Participants who earn less than $40,000 are also the group most strongly opposed to the idea. So that's interesting information there. Uh, no doubt we're not going to see anything like, you know, legal tender laws for Bitcoin in the United States anytime soon. But you do have it in El Salvador. That's a big news. It's now in effect. And uh, companies are able to use the new Shivo wallet, which is an app that you can download to your phone. And President Bukele there in El Salvador actually uh, is giving $30 of Bitcoin to, uh, you know, El Salvadoran residents who download the app. And uh, then they can use it. And this is a huge uh, benefit for all the remittance payments that go on. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, I think it was like 20 or 30 percent of the economy in El Salvador is composed of remittance payments, which these, these are payments made to the country by those who maybe have left the country and are sending money back home. It's the same way with Mexico and many of the other Central American countries and, and, and even in South America. And these remittance payments, you know, they're they're pretty hefty. There's a lot of fees that go along with them. So uh, there was a report put out by CNBC the other day that said that Western Union stands to lose around, and other companies like them stand to lose about $400 million in fees, you know, from this new law. So uh, many of these companies have been preying on the remittance business they've been getting from these countries, these poor countries. And Bitcoin, you know, provides a, a very low cost way, if not in some cases free, with the Shivo wallet. Uh, the ability to send money back home without these gargantuan fees. So that's a pretty big deal. Uh, so, But El Salvador is not alone in legalizing cryptocurrency and recognizing it legally. You know, a couple of weeks ago, you had Cuba. They passed this resolution known as Resolution 215, in which the Cuban Central Bank officially recognizes and regulates cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Now, Cuba's new acceptance of cryptocurrency payments really became important amid the ongoing U.S. sanctions that intensified underneath the Trump administration and that continue underneath the Biden administration. You know, getting money in and out of Cuba uh, has become extremely difficult, especially last year uh, amid the, you know, the uh, pandemic, of course, which is still raging. But then also uh, when Western Union shut down all of its 400 plus locations across Cuba in response to U.S. sanctions that got, you know, uh, ratcheted up last year. So crypto adoption in Cuba 
is strategic, right? It appears to be more of a necessity than perhaps a choice. So Cuba's in Cuba's case, you know, this really highlights one of the primary reasons why the U.S. has been dragging its feet on cryptocurrency, because it realizes that cryptocurrency provides countries with a means of circumventing the sanctions regimes that they place on them, right? Shutting a country out of the U.S. dollar system and thus out of the, out of the world economy now carries less of a bite thanks to cryptocurrencies. So Cuba has made a move here. Uh, and again, that's really interesting. Then there's Ukraine. I mean, we also we could talk about Vietnam. We could talk about other uh, countries as well that have been moving in this direction. Uh, Panama is also moving in this direction. But then we have Ukraine. Ukraine's a pretty interesting one as well. Last week, Ukraine became the fifth country to officially legalize and regulate cryptocurrency. And as in most countries, the laws surrounding crypto in Ukraine have been murky. But all that changed last week when the Ukrainian parliament adopted a new law that creates a legal, innovative market for digital assets. And all that needs to happen now is the Ukrainian president Zelensky needs to sign it. And while this new legal framework does not make Bitcoin legal tender like it did, you know, like, like they did in El Salvador, uh, it does send a clarion call to entrepreneurs and innovators that, and crypto investors that Ukraine is increasingly friendly and open for business when it comes to digital assets and the digital asset class in general. So lots of things happening around the world. Uh, you know, Ukraine, Cuba, El Salvador, Panama, Vietnam, and the list goes on. Then you have corporations that are adopting uh, Bitcoin. And so this thing is not going away, right? It's certainly not going away. And we think it's going to continue to grow in adoption, both at a corporate level and at a national level, undoubtedly. Okay, so let's let's shift gears here from Bitcoin and let's talk about Ethereum for a minute because Ethereum, that's the world's second largest cryptocurrency project. And it has been getting a lot of attention in 2021. You know, when you look at Ethereum, you'll see that over the last 12 months, the price of Ethereum has shot up more than 800%. And over the last, well, just this year alone, just 2021 year to date, it's up around 362%. So what's driving the move around Ethereum? Well, Ethereum had a really major upgrade. It's doing a big upgrade uh, in what is known as Ethereum 2.0. Ethereum started out very similar to Bitcoin in the fact that it was proof of work. It was an algorithm, a uh, consensus algorithm that was proof of work. And what this means is that you actually have to use computing power to mine, to create uh, new uh, Ethereum, and thus you also validate transactions on the network. Well, Ethereum is decided to change from a proof of work consensus algorithm to a proof of stake and what that means is that instead of mining for Ethereum, you would actually stake or lock up Ethereum uh, as a way to validate transactions. And stakers get a fee, get a cut. So just like miners, you've heard about you know Bitcoin miners making money when they mine for Bitcoin. They have to use all this computing power. Well, that's been that's been pretty uh, controversial uh, because you know it takes a lot of energy, and people are worried about energy consumption and all of this. Well. With this switch from Ethereum's proof of work uh, algorithm to a proof of stake algorithm, you know many things are going to happen. But two of them are going to be: a) you're going to slash energy consumption for running the network uh, because you won't have to do all the heavy-duty com uh, computing power, and then secondly, those who uh, participate will be able to earn rewards. So right now, we're actually earning around five percent by staking our Ethereum uh, right now. And that's really good, 5% per year. Uh, that number, of course, will you know ultimately shift in the future. But right now, that's a really good uh, return you know, on Ethereum. And Ethereum's just had a really big move this year. So anyway, this big upgrade was known as the London Hard Fork, and it was activated back in August. And it also rolled out five new code upgrades. One of them I have been talking to our members about for a long time. It was known as EIP-1559. That changes the network's fee structure in a way that creates deflationary pressure on the total supply of Ether. That's the uh, native token. And it, what it does is it burns, or another word for that is removes, a certain amount of the cryptocurrency from the circulation with every new transaction. 
And so what this means is that Ethereum is moving in a direction where its supply will be deflationary. Now, you understand how powerful that is in a world where everything is just printed out of thin air. I mean, our currency here in the United States, the U.S. dollar, is just printed out of thin air. They just make it. They just print it. They just hit the print button and more comes, you know, more comes out of the machine. Or really, they just type it into uh, the computer, right? It's just really just computer money is all that it is. And they create money out of thin air, right? So there's no cap. Right? There's no total hard cap on the number of dollars that can be printed. There's, they're infinite. So whenever you see monetary policy moves like this, the reason why pe people are attracted to Bitcoin in many ways is because of that hard cap. Only 21 million Bitcoin will ever be mined, right? That's really, that's really something. That's hard for modern people to get their heads around. You mean, you know, you can't print Bitcoin out of thin air? You can't just, you know, make it out of thin air? Right? just like the U.S. dollar? No. And so that attracts people who understand the benefits of something that's finite in nature. Well, something similar here with Ethereum, they have implemented this new upgrade, this EIP-1559. EIP stands for Ethereum Improvement Proposal. And it changes that network's fee structure to create deflationary pressure on the total supply of Ethereum. Uh, so again, if you're looking for deflationary pressure, on the total uh, supply of your currency, well, Ethereum is doing it. So anyway, that's really been an exciting thing. Ethereum's only like six years old, but it already has global brand recognition in the crypto world, second only to Bitcoin. And we alerted our members that we were adding Ethereum's native token to our long-term cryptocurrency portfolio back in May of 2017. And it was trading at around $12 at the time. So that means that Ethereum has gone up around 24,000% since we added it to our long-term portfolio and told our members about it. Now, some people would consider that to be major bragging rights, right? People would go out and be talking about it. But I don't, I don't view things that way. You know, sometimes we win in investing, sometimes we don't. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging a big victory. I mean, 24,000% return is, you know, that's pretty huge, you know, especially when you're able to share that with others. But it's always best to take all things in stride rather than to get prideful about a particular win or a devastatingly depressed about a certain loss. You know, pride and excessive emotions are deadly in the world of investing. So we find it best to stay humble and keep learning. These are the keys to long-term success. But here's the point is that, you know, we have seen massive gains in the cryptocurrency space. And that's why we don't ignore it. That's why we continue to be uh, involved in the space. And we continue just a dollar cost average into Ethereum, right? Uh, just over and over and over again. We think that there's a lot of more upside, not only in Bitcoin, but also in Ethereum. Our Bitcoin, by the way, I forgot to mention our Bitcoin 2025 price target is $275,000. So we expect it to go much higher from where it is today. It's trading below 50000 as of this recording. Uh, Ethereum, we also see it going, doing very well in the future. Um, so we don't really have a 2025 price target on it, but it certainly has smashed our 2021 price target we already had on it. It's already well above that. And we issue new price targets for our members at the beginning of every new, uh, at the beginning of every new year. Anyway, we have lots of education about Ethereum. Uh, if you're if you're scratching your head saying, gosh, I really wish I knew more about this, you need to become a member because we release updates on this stuff all the time to our members. And we do it in a way that's simple. We are, we're not going to flood you with information that's not relevant. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to just, you know, talk over your head all the time. We're going to really make it simple. In fact, I delivered a really big update and provided my bullish thesis on Ethereum through a video called Ethereum 101. It's a members only video, and it's a great way to learn uh, all about uh, Ethereum. Today, I'm more bullish on Ethereum than I ever have been. Uh, my investment approach remains the same as it was in the beginning. I continue to dollar cost average into the project regularly, and I plan to hold for the long term. Now, let's move from Ethereum to Cardano. Now, Cardano has become the third largest cryptocurrency in the world, and it hasn't always been that way. Uh, we were early adopters with, Car with Cardano. We told our members about it. Many of our members, in fact, comment on how they are so grateful that we were telling them about Cardano well before it became so well known. I mean, it was a dark horse. And we kept saying, you know, Cardano was a dark horse. We were talking about it when it was, you know, three cents, talking about it when it was nine cents. I mean, it was very cheap. And uh, in fact, just at the beginning of 2021, it was trading at about 18 cents at the beginning of this year. One year ago, 
Cardano was trading for nine cents. So over the last 12 months, you know, Cardano has risen 2,700% and it's up almost 1,300% just this year alone. So that's incredible returns. And we think that Cardano has a lot more upside over the coming years, right? I've been pounding the table on this particular cryptocurrency to our members uh, as one of my four favorite projects for the long term. And in 2021, this project finally appears to be gaining the attention of investors. It rose to a record level of around $3 in recent weeks as the blockchain project really uh, prepared to launch smart contract functionality. And in fact, that's already happened. So we saw this big thing roll out. And that's really what boosted Cardano up to that third largest cryptocurrency by market cap. And it really shouldn't be any surprise to those who are familiar with the aims and ambitions of the Cardano project. But it's exciting nonetheless. And when you look at what's behind this sudden rise in investor interest this year and what's driving the current price appreciation, you're going to find that it's Cardano's new network upgrade. Just as Ethereum is making changes to its network, so too Cardano is making changes to its network. And what it has done is it started out like Ethereum in the fact that it was proof of stake, right? So in other words, instead of mining for Cardano, you actually just would stake it and you would earn rewards that way. But instead of... Uh, offering the smart contract functionality at the beginning, they didn't do that. Cardano didn't do that. So Cardano just recently uh, uh, rolled out smart contract functionality. If you're not familiar with smart contracts, you really need to focus, need to learn about these because they're. I think they're going to be one of the biggest things. They already are huge, but I think they're going to be one of the biggest things in the future. Put simply, smart contracts are self-executable legal contracts, and they truly represent the next generation of digital agreements. And uh, technically speaking, a smart contract is composed of a set of instructions that are deployed to a blockchain and executed without any third party intermediaries. And so this new smart contract functionality, which launched on September 12th, I want to say it was on last Sunday, opens up a whole new world of possibilities. So now you can have DeFi. You've heard about DeFi. Now you can have DeFi on the Cardano blockchain. You can have lending protocols. You can have NFTs, non-fungible tokens. You probably heard about these. These are all the rage. Now you can have that on the Cardano network and so much more. So up until now, Ethereum has really dominated the use of smart contracts on the blockchain. But Cardano's upgrade now is going to be taking some of that market share. So, you know, we're really excited about what this means. And this improvement could put the network in a better position to challenge Ethereum. It's already number three. Cardano is already number three, right behind the Ethereum network itself, which is number two. And, you know, again, we're not saying that Cardano will necessarily flip in uh, Ethereum, that it will overtake it, but it could. You just never know, right? Who knew back in the 1980s or 1970s that Kmart would no longer be around, that Walmart would win? I mean, I remember Kmart when I was a kid, you know. Uh, think about some of the different brands, some of the biggest comp companies that were around, say, 30 years ago. And now think about what's big today. Google, for example, perfect example. It wasn't around, say, what, 30 years ago. Nowhere to be found, right? You know, you start thinking about, you know, different companies and you realize, wow, I mean, sometimes things can happen. And so we're very bullish on the future of Cardano. We've been that way for a long time. It's been our thesis for a long time that we would see a lot of good things ahead. And this isn't the end of the road. In fact, you can go on Card Cardano's website, cardano.org, and you can see the future of the Cardano project laid out in their development roadmap. Cardano already has a presence in Africa, uh, which is growing. And they also have unveiled their five-year growth strategy. They're targeting mainstream financial institutions, large corporations. And Charles Hoskinson, the uh, founder of uh, the Cardano project has revealed that the mission behind the organization is to have a 1 billion users over the next five to 10 years. So that's huge. We created a 45 minute investor overview that is jam packed with important information about the Cardano project and why we like it and where we see it going. And that's available for all of our members. So when you become a gold or a platinum member, you get access to that video and all the other videos we've done. Now, there's one more thing I want to mention before we bring this to a close, and that is that not only are we excited about the future of these three pro uh, cryptocurrency projects and many others that we don't have time to talk about today, but we also are very excited about the passive income that we are earning from cryptocurrency. And I want to do an entire podcast episode on earning passive income from cryptocurrency because this is a new income stream that people can turn on. So if you're a Cardano investor, 
If you're an Ethereum investor, I already told you we're earning 5% from Ethereum. If you're a Cardano investor, you can earn you know, around 5% as well in passive income. And that's something known as staking. Uh, and so we just did a recent video for our gold and platinum members called Staking 101, Crypto Staking 101. And we explain how we do this. It is very simple. Anyone can do it. You may say, well, I was thinking about mining for Bitcoin, but I never got around to it or I don't know how or it's too complicated. Well, staking is another way to earn passive income from cryptocurrency, but it's very simple and you don't need to spend lots and lots of money on computer hardware. It's literally a click of a button. And in fact, much of the staking we do is from our own hardware wallet. So we use our ledger, we put our cryptocurrency there, we press a few buttons, and then we start earning passive income. It sounds too good to be true. And it does sometimes feel like it because the income that you can earn from, from passive income from cryptocurrencies through staking is just phenomenal. So if you're interested in learning about staking, uh, be sure to stay tuned for a future episode. We're going to talk about it. But if you want information now and you want to get started, just become a member here. Follow the money. Join us and become a gold or a platinum member and go right to our cryptocurrency portfolio page and click on the Staking 101 tab. And you'll watch the whole video we did, this huge video where we lay it all out. My, my wife, Jennifer, and I did the video together because she helps me with it. And this is a great project, a great way to earn income, passive income from cryptocurrencies. Not only can you get the capital appreciation of holding them over time, but then you can also earn a passive income from them, kind of like dividends from stocks, by holding them and staking them, which is a way of validating transactions on the network. So these are all very exciting times for cryptocurrency investors. We have been helping our students wisely invest in this space for nearly a decade. And if we can help you, just let us know. And again, if you want to become a member here, at Follow the Money and get access to all of our cryptocurrency investing resources, not only the current ones, which we have a vast treasure trove of educational videos, our portfolio, buy and sell alerts, all of that. You can see everything that we own, our price targets on everything. But then you'll also get access to learning how to earn passive income from cryptocurrencies and then a whole lot more, not just cryptocurrencies, but stocks and ETFs and commodities and other currencies and many of those things as well. Real estate, we have a big real estate course coming up for our gold and platinum members. We have a big moving average uh, uh, video course coming up for our, our members. So we're constantly educating our members. So if you want to learn more about this and really create a passive income and really grow your wealth with cryptocurrencies in a prudent and wise way, join us. Followthemoney.com forward slash join. You can get all the details about our gold and platinum memberships. Hi, friends, it's Jerry Robinson here from Follow the Money Radio. Do you want to learn how to trade options? Are you intimidated by options trading but still have a desire to learn how it all works? If so, you will be pleased to know that our options trading course is now on sale in our online store for only $37, but for a very limited time. When you purchase this five-hour online video course, you will learn how to leverage the power of options to generate a steady stream of income from the markets while minimizing risk. This course, which is deeply discounted for a limited time, provides you with eight full-length video lessons with me that will walk you step-by-step -step on how to get started in the world of trading options. This video course begins with a comprehensive introduction to key options trading concepts, including calls and puts, premiums, volatility, along with an introduction to option Greeks and how to properly value an option before you make a trade. But this video course not only introduces you to the basic concepts of options trading, it also provides you with three proven option trading strategies, including how to rent out the stocks that you already own to others to generate a passive income by selling covered call options. We'll also teach you a smart way to buy call options for profits. And our students have told us that the secrets revealed in this video alone are worth the price of the entire options trading course. You'll also learn a unique options trading strategy where you can get paid while you wait to buy your favorite stock. This is an advanced trading strategy that is one of our favorites among our top trading students. So this options trading course contains a tremendous amount of knowledge jam-packed into five full hours of video presentations that you will want to watch over and over again as you begin or continue your trading journey. If your goal is to learn how to make money with options, this is a must-have education video series. And you can unlock this entire video course right now by simply going to followthemoney.com forward slash shop. 
There, you'll find our online store and simply look for the options trading course. This is a special introductory price and it is a limited time offer, so act now. Go to followthemoney.com forward slash shop and take advantage of our deeply discounted options trading course today. friends welcome back to the final moments of today's podcast episode episode number 397 cryptocurrency investing update is the topic today we talked about bitcoin ethereum cardano we talked about a lot of the global news a lot of the global events that have been happening a lot of the changes that are happening in the actual uh, projects themselves and we also talked about staking and I, I really don't want to forget i want to do a future podcast episode on cryptocurrency staking we've got a few comments from some of you out there looking for more information on that so uh, no doubt about that that's coming up and by the way if you have a recommendation for a future podcast episode or you have someone that you think we would we should interview you know some topic we'd love to hear from you just reach out to us through our website at followthemoney.com just click on the contact button and send us a you know a little note send us a comment about our podcast or a question we're always happy to hear from you and as always i'd like to leave you with a final word this time just a wise quote by the famed motivational speaker zig ziglar when he said rich people have small tvs and big libraries poor people have small libraries and big tvs that's just something to think about Along those same lines, we have a really good episode, episode 344, entitled Five Must-Read Books for Investors. If you're looking to build a library around trading and investing, that's a great place to start. Episode 344, Five Must-Read Books for Investors. All right, friends. Well, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Thanks for joining us. And as always, when you want the truth, just follow the money. Have a safe and prosperous week, and we'll see you right back here next time. Until then, God bless. The information contained on the Follow the Money podcast is strictly for informational and educational purposes. It should not be construed as specific investment advice. The views and opinions of our guests and sponsors, including Tom Cloud, are their own and do not necessarily represent the views of FTMDaily.com or Robinson Media Group, LLC. Jerry Robinson does hold an insurance license and at times may offer consulting on life insurance and fixed retirement income products. Follow-up, individualized responses to email or phone requests that involve the rendering of personalized investment advice for compensation will not be made absent compliance with state investment advisor registration requirements or an applicable exemption or exclusion and applicable insurance regulations. Past performance is not indicative of future results. You should be aware of the real risk of loss in following any strategy or investment discussion on the podcast. Remember, never do your financial planning through podcast or radio. It's your money. Be wise. Do your due diligence and always consult a trusted financial professional before making any financial decisions.